Hello. I'm Akio Toyoda. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Today, I would like to talk about Toyota's strategy for achieving carbon neutrality, particularly our strategy for battery electric vehicles, BEVs, which represent one of the most promising options. I believe that achieving carbon neutrality means realizing a world in which all people living on this planet continue to live happily. We want to help realize such a world. This has been and will continue to be Toyota's wish and our mission as a global company. For that challenge, we need to reduce CO2 emissions as much as possible, as soon as possible. We are living in a diversified world and in an era in which it is hard to predict the future. Therefore, it is difficult to make everyone happy with a one-size-fits-all option. That is why Toyota wants to prepare as many options as possible for our customers around the world. We believe that all electrified vehicles can be divided into two categories, depending on the energy that they use. One category is that of carbon-reducing vehicles. If the energy that powers vehicles is not clean, the use of an electrified vehicle, no matter what type it might be, would not result in zero CO2 emissions. The other category is that of carbon-neutral vehicles. Vehicles in this category run on clean energy and achieve zero CO2 emissions in the whole process of their use. We at Toyota will do our utmost to realize such vehicles. Today, we would like to present to you what we have been preparing for the future. Let's start with the Toyota BZ series of our dedicated battery EVs. Beyond zero. The Toyota BZ means going beyond zero. Freedom of movement and fun to drive for all. Our goal is not only to reduce CO2 emissions and other negative impacts to zero. Our goal goes beyond those. For the BZ series, we developed a dedicated platform for battery EVs to meet the diverse needs of the global market. The first model in the lineup is the BZ4X here, which we recently announced. Jointly developing it with Subaru enabled us to pursue smoothness and maneuverability as well as the drivability of a Gen 1 SUV. For its launch next year, we are preparing for the production of the BZ4X at Toyota's Mutomachi plant right this very moment. We will soon deliver it to our customers. Furthermore, we are expanding the BZ series lineup. Please have a look at these two models. This mid-size SUV has a beautiful silhouette that presages a new era for battery EVs. At just a single glance, its styling can invite you to want to get in and go for a drive. And this is the most compact SUV in the series. A small battery EV with a comfortable interior designed with Europe and Japan in mind. The more batteries you add to extend cruising range, the bigger, heavier, and more expensive a vehicle becomes. Because this SUV is a small vehicle, there is something we must be thorough and very particular about, and that is power efficiency. The important thing is to what degree we can increase a vehicle's overall energy efficiency 
In other words, how much less energy a vehicle needs to run. This is exactly the technology that Toyota has been refining for more than 30 years. Putting our best efforts into all aspects of these, with this vehicle, we are aiming for a power consumption of 125 watt-hours per kilometer, which will be the highest in the compact SUV class. And this is a mid-size sedan that meets customers' expectations for a first car. We also have a large SUV with available third-row seats that allow families to experience fulfilling times together. So, what do you think? We will not only add battery EV options to existing vehicle models, but will also offer a full lineup of reasonably priced mass production models, such as the BZ series, to meet the needs of all kinds of customers. By doing so, we hope to deliver to customers around the world the unique and beautiful styling as well as fun-to-drive aspects of battery EVs and the experience of a life with battery EVs. Toyota is a global company supported by customers around the world. The Toyota brand now offers more than 100 models of engine-only vehicles hybrid electric vehicles, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, and fuel cell electric vehicles in more than 170 countries and regions. The Lexus brand has introduced more than 30 models of engine-only vehicles, hybrid electric vehicles, and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles in more than 90 countries and regions. Furthermore, we will expand the options for carbon-neutral vehicles by offering a full lineup of battery EVs. Specifically, we plan to roll out 30 battery EV models by 2030, globally offering a full lineup of battery EVs in the passenger and commercial segments. Now, please take a look. Here's Toyota's greater battery EV lineup. Welcome to our showroom of the future. First, let's start with the Lexus brand. Lexus strives to be the brand that people who know authenticity choose at the end of the day. As brand holder, I continue to believe that. Lexus has pursued unique styling and a unique driving signature. And as a pioneer in hybrid electric technology, it has refined its electrification technology. And now Lexus is embarking on a new chapter. Please watch this video. This car is Lexus' very first dedicated battery-driven EV. We call it the RZ. What does Z stand for? Zero. We wanted a battery-powered EV that captures the Lexus spirit. I want people to be able to identify that it's a Lexus, even as an EV. The four-wheel contact sensation here is top-notch. Those sensations should be a consistent part of the Lexus experience. We want to ensure that nothing has been lost in the process of making a battery-driven EV. Well, I do feel the four-wheel contact sensation. This car feels a bit heavy. So, what happens if I were to go faster? Be my guest. Wow. What's this? It's like night and day. Oh. 
So what do you think? I'm seeing a whole new side of this car now. Well, speaking as the master driver, I want a car that I want to keep driving forever. And it should be environmentally friendly, but straight up fun to drive. Let's make that car for Lexus' new chapter with the Z brand. I'm all for it. Let's do it. This is the name of our electrification efforts here at Lexus, Lexus Electrified. Extracting the full potential of the vehicle through electrification technology, that is what electrification means to Lexus. We will deliver a unique electrified Lexus that combines linear motor acceleration, deceleration, brake feeling and exhilarating handling to pr further pursue the joy of driving. In particular, we believe that the battery EV will become the future symbol of Lexus as a model that most clearly expresses the evolution of the automobile brought about by electrification. The latest of these models is the Lexus RZ. The process of strengthening the fundamentals and pursuing the Lexus driving signature will not change even if it is a battery EV. The endless pursuit of the Lexus driving signature will move to the next stage through development of the new sports battery EV. With bold proportions and low ride height, essential to a sports car, it will showcase the unique driving performance of a Lexus and become a model that symbolizes the future of the brand. Acceleration time will be in the low two-second range, cruising range over 700 kilometers, and with the possible use of a solid state batteries in mind, we will aim to create a truly high-performance battery EV. Through BEVS, we will develop Lexus into a brand that offers a variety of experiences harnessing performance development that only a car maker like Lexus could do and by honing the craft of making ever more personal products. Lexus will develop a next-generation battery EV sports car that inherits the driving taste with the secret sauce of the performers cultivated via the development of the LFA. We will extend the driving taste refined this way to other models as we, we evolve Lexus into a brand centered on battery EVs. We can position batteries and electric motors to bring more freedom to battery EVs. This freedom will allow us to be more attuned to our customers. Various needs of different regions and various lifestyles and everything from long distance transport to last mile delivery of commercial vehicles. The vehicles you see behind the Lexus lineup, they are the diverse Toyota battery EVs. Now please, Watch this video. You know, the world is becoming ever more diverse. People are increasingly confident in making their own choices to lead free and enjoyable lifestyles. Now, at Toyota, we believe that truly good products create new experiences for the customer, enhancing their chosen lifestyle directions. And from that point of view, each electric vehicle should be unique and special. Not only those on dedicated platforms, but also those related to existing models. Now, whether that means building on Toyota's off-road heritage to create new and exciting recreational experiences, or finding new ways to combine versatility with dynamic driving, commercial-use vehicles such as the e-Pallet will change the face of daily life in the city. But we'll also challenge smaller size segments for new mobility solutions. Compact, ultra-versatility will open up new and exciting possibilities for both work use and for youngsters to personalize. As well as new approaches for the smallest segments, such as made for sharing, where different variations cater to different business scenes. And last, but certainly not least, car fans like Akio Toyota will certainly not be disappointed. The EV era is an opportunity and a chance for more variety and more fun. An EV for you, 
an EV for me and an EV for everyone. EV for everyone. So what did you think about Toyota's battery EVs? The future that we showed you today is by no means far away. Most of the Toyota battery EVs that we introduced here are models that will be coming out in the next few years. We aim to achieve global sales of 3.5 million battery EVs per year by 2030. Lexus aims to realize a full lineup of battery EVs in all vehicle segments by 2030 and to have battery EVs account for 100% of its vehicle sales in Europe, North America and China totaling 1 million units globally. And it aims for battery EVs to make up 100% of its global vehicle sales in 2035. To achieve these goals, we have invested in various areas for a long time. In the area of vehicle development, in 1997, Toyota launched the Prius, the world's first mass production hybrid electric vehicle. But in fact, our development of battery EVs had started before that. In 1992, we established the Electric Vehicle Development Division and we introduced the RAV4 EV to the market in 1996. In the 2000s, we demonstrated our small prototype commuter EV, ECOM, in various places. Furthermore, in 2012, we introduced the COMS, an ultra-small EV, and the small EQ EV. Thus, we have long explored the potential of battery EVs. We launched the C-Pod in Seawalk this year and has accelerated the development of battery EVs, including the e-pallet, for freedom of movement in various scenes. As we started developing battery EVs in the early 1990s, we also began developing fuel cell electric vehicles, which run on hydrogen. In 2002, we introduced the Toyota FCHV to the market to go through various demonstrations. And in 2008, the vehicle was redesigned into the Toyota FCHV Advanced. Based on such long-term efforts, in 2014, the first-generation Mirai was finally launched. Since then, fuel cells have been adopted for buses and large trucks and continue to evolve. Toyota has continued to research, develop, and produce batteries in-house for many years. In 1996, we established what is today Prime Earth EV Energy while refining our nickel metal hydrate batteries technologies, we started accelerating the development of lithium ion batteries in 2003. Furthermore, since having established a battery research division in 2008, we have been advancing research on solid state batteries and other next generation batteries. Last year, we established Prime Plummet Energy Solutions to accelerate integrated efforts in the battery business. Over the past 26 years, we invested nearly 1 trillion yen and produced more than 19 million batteries. We believe that our accumulated experiences is an asset that gives us a competitive edge. Going forward, we will increase our new investment in batteries from the 1.5 trillion yen announced in September to 2 trillion yen, aiming to realize even more advanced, high-quality and affordable batteries. 
Toyota Tsusho began conducting lithium and other surveys as early as in 2006 and has been working to secure stable sources of natural resources. And in the area of energy, too, Toyota Tsusho has been working to secure renewable energy sources such as wind and photovoltaic power generation for more than 30 years. Furthermore, at manufacturing plants, we are aiming to achieve carbon neutrality by 2035 by continuously reducing energy use and by expanding the use of innovative production engineering technology. In this diversified and uncharted era, it is important to flexibly change the types and quantities of products produced while keeping an eye on the market trends. We believe that the reduction in lead times and high mix low volume production methods that we have cultivated through the Toyota production system along with the steady efforts of Japanese monozukuri manufacturing will enable us to be competitive going forward. We will continue to advance initiatives in all areas together with many of our partners among Toyota Group companies, suppliers, and dealers. Energy plays a critical role in achieving carbon neutrality. At present, the energy situation varies greatly from region to region. That is exactly why Toyota is committed to providing a diversified range of carbon neutral options to meet whatever might be the needs and situations in every country and region. It is not us, but local markets and our customers who decide which options to choose. Why do we try to keep so many options? In business management, one might think it will be more efficient to focus on fewer choices. However, we believe that quickly adapting to changes in the future is more important than trying to predict the future, which is nothing but uncertain. We want to keep options available for our customers until the right path is known. Toyota aims to be a company that contributes to the global environment, seeks to bring happiness to people, acts and stays close to its customers. In a nutshell, we want to become a company that mass produces happiness for both individuals and society. We want to pass on an ever better future to the children of today and those who will come after them. We always want the future to be brighter. I believe that the future is something to be built by all of us together. Japan's automotive industry is home to our 5.5 million colleagues who have supported Japanese manufacturing and mobility. And we have many more colleagues throughout the world. If we all take action with unity of mind and with determination and passion, we will be able to leave behind many smiling faces and a beautiful earth for the future generations to come. That is what I believe, and that is what we will achieve. Thank you. We would like, like to begin the QA session. I will introduce the members on stage. President and CEO Akio Toyoda. Chief Technology Officer Masahiko Maeda. Chief Branding Officer Koji Sato. Chief 
Senior General Manager of Design, Simon Humphreys. Those who have questions, please raise your hand and we will bring the microphone to you. Please mention your name and affiliate and start with your question. We would like to receive questions from as many people as possible, so may we ask you to keep your questions to one question per person. Please raise your hand if you have any questions. In the second row, Mr. Katori from Yomiuri Shimbun. I am Katori from Yomiuri Newspapers. Thank you. So you earlier said that uh, 3.5 million uh, for 20, by 2030, and that is a large upward revision from 2 million that you have been targeting before. And uh, Toyota was seen to be conservative against uh, electrified vehicles, and this is a significant change. So what is the reason for this big change? I'll first start by responding, and then I'll have the other members make additional comments. First of all, for the 2 million units, that is quite a volume as well. 2 million units, if it is an automobile company, most of the Chinese uh, big companies, OEMs, uh, will have about that uh, vehicle. And then we're adding another 1.5 million and making that to 3.5 million. And when it's 3.5 million, for example, it's equivalent to like uh, Daimler, PSA, Suzuki Motors, this kind of company's size. If these companies made all of their vehicles that they sell to BEVs, it will be about this amount. That's the size and volume that we're talking about. A significant volume is what we are talking about here. I hope you can understand that, first of all. And also the, not only the EVs, but FC EVs included, and other EVs included. For carbon neutrality, it's about the using part of the car. And in many ways, uh, for it will be carbon neutral, carbon free type of vehicles. But like I said in my message, it also depends on what energy we use. And depending on the region we're talking about, it might become a carbon-reducing vehicle or a carbon-neutral vehicle. And this year we had COP26. And as COP26 was held, each country has made their announcements and made clear about the energy policies that they have. And as we saw those policies becoming clear, we have been thinking about our carbon neutrality uh, initiatives and have come up with a plan to see a realistic plan. So as we have had this discussion and uh, uh, sophisticated our plan, uh, we have come up with this number. In real terms, like Mr. Toyota explained, that was the background. For example, the U.S. presidential decree being issued and others, uh, we have seen more the change uh, be clear and active in the market. So with that as a background, we have had discussions to come up with a volume that we believe we have to prepare uh, to be able to deliver. So using this plan and volume, uh, we will be doing the preparations and development work uh, in the company. And we said that this is one criteria. So this will be uh, a criteria, a, a guideline uh, that we will use to do the necessary preparations on the development side, production side, and also make necessary investments. So that will be all in the background here for the numbers that we have announced. Thank you. Well, if I can add a little bit from the Lexus perspective, this time Lexus has said that uh, we are going to target 1 million units. Lexus in March this year for the electrified Lexus Electrified Initiatives have been announced this year toward 2025 
the electrified vehicles popularization is going to be accelerated. That was the announcement. And as Mr. Toyota explained in his speech, in the world, we are seeing a quick change, and especially in the luxury segment, the advanced technologies and also expectations to BEVs is rapidly increasing. And the uh, energy mix will be different according to each region, but for the luxury segment, we are seeing a rapid mindset change of the customer. So we want to be flexible to meet those expectations. That is why uh, we have made this announcement this time. From Maeda-san, he talked about uh, the setting the criteria or guideline. So once we set this kind of a target as a guideline, we'll be able to work on practical activities to understand and clarify, identify what kind of issues we will have so that we can accelerate the necessary activities. That is the background uh, of the announcement made today. Thank you. Next question, please. A journalist from Nikkei, please, in the third row. Thank you. I am Yuzawa from Nikkei. Thank you very much for this opportunity. So, toward 3.5 million vehicles, Maeda san mentioned the increased amount of investment. At this point in time, what sort of investment do you have in mind? If you have any information that you can share with us, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Now, at the time of battery IR, we announced a number of 1.5 trillion yen. As Mr. Toyoda mentioned in his presentation, we will be increasing that to 2 trillion yen. Now, 3.5 million vehicles. R&D investment will be involved, totaling 2 trillion yen, another 2 trillion yen, so the total would be 4 trillion yen. In addition, when it comes to all electrified fleet outside of batteries, we have hybrid, we also have plug-in hybrid and FCEVs. So we are making another 4 trillion yen of investment. The total, therefore, is 8 trillion yen based on the criteria that I mentioned earlier. We are not saying that we are going to use it all up. This is an indication that we are ready and when actually spent the amount, how much we will be able to reduce the cost and reduce the lead time. And when it time comes to timing, if we can reduce and shorten lead times, we can certainly make our investment more efficient and effective. And that is an area that we are especially careful about. So, based on all such assumptions, we are now talking about 8 trillion yen. Thank you for your question. Next person, please. I think uh, it is NHK. NHK, please. I am Noguchi from NHK. Thank you. So as I watched the presentation earlier, I could see how uh, you are emphasizing the EV strategy. And uh, you have, are talking about a full lineup, uh, so a strategy plan for all directions. And going forward, there are a variety of electrified vehicles. But are you saying that you're going to be further emphasizing battery EVs, but for your 360 degrees or full lineup uh, electrified vehicle strategy has not changed, which is it? Well, for us, currently, as we strive to achieve carbon neutrality, we are going to make a company-wide effort to achieve that target. This has not changed. But as you know, Toyota has a global, uh, we are a global company with a full lineup of products. And in that sense, we'll, there has been a big change in the countries and regions policies, and the way the vehicles are used is now more diversified. In addition, the market or the customers, when we look at them, how which will be the final menu they would like to choose. This is something that Toyota cannot control. It will be out of our control. And just because we make a decision, it doesn't mean that our decision will be the solution. 
So what I have been repeatedly saying is that for Toyota, for which option will be selected, that is not what we're going to decide on. We are going to have a more wider option available. And this has been the same as before. And going forward, for all of the menus that we're going to have on the list, we will be seriously engaged to provide all of these uh, uh, options. And there's a tendency that some people say that uh, Toyota is not interested in EVs. That's what we hear a lot. But as I said before, it's uh, 2 million. When you think about the volume that we're talking about, it's a huge volume. But since uh, we have the total volume of 10 million uh, for our sales, uh, then everyone will think about the ratio. But even if it's 2 million, it's a huge number. And we're saying now 3.5 million as a baseline. But then people will still say that, well, Toyota has, uh, for Toyota, it's 10 million, 3.5 million out of the 10 million. But for us, we want to keep the options for everyone available. And rather than making a selection and concentration of which path to go on, we want to watch uh, how, uh, how the customers and market will change. And we want to be prepared to flexibly meet the expectations and preferences. And I believe that in this way we will be able to enhance our competitiveness, and I believe that this approach will be able to provide a timely uh, proposal to the customers and the market. And that is the way that we will be able to survive. So this is has not changed from before. For all of the options, we are not going to decide on the priorities. All of these options, we're going to put our full effort in. So, in a sense, just because I'm riding a fuel cell electrified vehicles, it's not that we're prioritizing the fuel cells and uh, uh, so the hydrogen engine, excuse me, a hydrogen engine, just because I'm riding it, it's not that we're having a full uh, priority on that. That doesn't mean that. So, for all of the employees, the suppliers, and also the affiliated companies, and the 5.5 million of the people working in the automobile industry, with all of these friends and partners, we're going to work on this uh, with this mindset. Set, and we are uh, having these activities global-wide. And our weapon in our global operation is the full lineup of products. So us battling in the global field uh, with a full lineup of products, uh, we want to make a proposal of a way to uh, battle, uh, to, have a, uh, to be in this uh, market. And we are really putting our serious effort into this approach. Uh, whether it's a multi-solution approach or uh, otherwise, uh, we are uh, very seriously working uh, with our full effort in all of these areas. Can I just add a little bit to Toyota-san's comments there? I think that uh, the future, of course, is, uh, is very difficult to understand for everybody. That's the first comment. But uh, within that future, one thing that we can probably say for, for sure is that each region and all of society is becoming more diverse. はい、私の方から少しだけ豊田社長の言ったことにコメントを加えたいと思います。将来、未来というのはもちろんみんなにとって、全員にとって理解をするのは難しい、わからないものです。しかし、未来について一つだけ確実に言えることは、地域もそして社会もどんどんと多様化しているということです。So one of the next steps for Toyota, more than anything, is to build on our strengths, which is understanding what customers really want. And within that diversity, we see customers increasingly more confident in their choices, particularly with regard to products and design. 次にトヨタが何をできるのか、次のステップ、トヨタにとっては何かというと、それはトヨタの強みを上げていくこと、そしてそれはすなわち、お客様が何を欲しているのかということを理解することなのです。多様性の中で、私たちが見ているのは、お客様はその自信を持って自分たちが選択をするようになっている、製品やその選択肢において、お客様自身が自信を持つようになっています。We need to do now probably the biggest hurdle or, or, or challenge is to increase customer acceptability in carbon neutral based design, I think. You know, we, the principle, all people agree that this type of direction is a necessity, but whether or not they're willing to accept that in practice is the next big hurdle, I think. For example, 
reusable uh, fabric, reusable materials, all these type of factors, we'll have to change the way of customer thinking. Then perhaps we can get to a point where we can achieve the numbers that are being talked about. そして今何が必要とされているのかまた次のハードルは何なのか課題チャレンジは何なのかと考えた時に私が思うにそれはお客様の側でカーボンニュートラルなデザインや考え方を受け入れられるようになるということが次のハードルになるのではないかと考えていますもちろん全員みんながこの方向性としてはこういったカーボンニュートラルの方向に行く必要性は原則として理解していますだけれどもそれを受け入れるその実,実用的な面で自分が選択するということが次のハードルではないかと考えています例えば再利用されたファブリックだったりですとか素材で再利用された素材を活用していくですとかこういったこと全てが関わっている全てが変化をする必要がありますお客様の考え方もこうして変わっていく必要性があると思っています次のハードルがそこでそこを乗り越えないとその数字のところにはたどりつかないと思っています。And if I may make two additional comments for this full line of strategy, the reason why we are continuing this strategy, there's two efforts that we have been continuing. And one is to make the development more efficient, the development process being more efficient. For the one model, 30 to 40 percent of the development efficiency has been improved. And this is because we have worked on creating the T and G. And establishing TNGA has a large effect on the development efficiency. And now, as we expand the BEV side, we have been able to strengthen our basic capabilities. And in addition, one another effort we have been making is branding. As we have announced today, the reason why Lexus uh, well, Lexus is going to be leading uh, the BEV products, and this is because of the characteristics of and trends of the luxury market, but also because advanced technology uh, will be led and uh, be the front, Lexus the front runner as uh, the corporate band. And then uh, for Gazoo Racing, like we talked about, uh, hydrogen engine, uh, Mr. Toyota talked about that. So motorsports is going to be the starting line to look into the possibilities of the carbon neutral fuels. So uh, we'll be making these all these challenges so that all the brands can utilize their strength uh, and uh, also look into uh, explore the wide area of possibilities. And that is a strength that Toyota has. And this is the background on why we want to continue our full lineup uh, strategy. And for this full lineup strategy, I can make, I'd like to make some additional comments from the customer's perspective. For example, the U.S. or North American market, the electric power supply and the usage uh, situation, the West and East Coast, as you know, uh, these West and East Coast uh, will be have a preference uh, for the environment-friendly cars, and also they have a good established infrastructure. But when you go to the Midwest or into the more the central areas of U.S., the usage environment will be different. It will be quite tough to shift immediately into using battery EVs. So even if it's one country, looking into the different areas of one country, there are areas where battery EVs is more convenient and not so convenient. Therefore, the customers will be uh, selecting different types of products depending on their situations. And that is why we need to have a wide variety of products available so that we can provide to our customers. And like you know, Brazil, they have the bioethanol fuel already being uh, commercial and for Toyota, for biofuel, uh, bioethanol, uh, we have a combination with our products. And uh, bioethanol, it is uh, uh, more lower in price uh, than gasoline. So in the market, it is more marketable. So thinking of these actual situations of difference of each region, we don't want to force the battery EVs uh, into a, this kind of a market because they might not want to buy it. And like uh, Mr. Toyota said, uh, globally, Toyota is, uh, has a global operation, and we have been building trust in each of these regions that we operate in with our products. So we don't want to uh, break this uh, relation, uh, damage this relationship. We want to continue to look into the uh, environment that uh, they are using their cars and their preferences and be able to uh, meet their expectations. So as a result, uh, we'll have to take this uh, full lineup strategy. So that is our situation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question, please. In the first row. A journalist from Toyo Kezai, please. 
Thank you very much. I'm from Toyo Keizai, and your battery EVs plants are very ambitious, and procurement of batteries appears to be the key. With a new presentation, 1.5 trillion yen or is increased to 2 trillion yen for development of batteries. And earlier, there was a talk about the North Carolina plants, and you also have alliances in PBS and so forth. So procurement of battery is an area that I'm most interested in. Thank you very much for your question. For different regions, basically, we would like to see the local production, local consumption, while considering the logistics fees and so forth. But how to procure at what level of volumes, we still are yet to see the clear picture of that. Basically, we have to reduce the single line unit cost and come up with the most optimum procurement plan for batteries. And at which point in time, which markets to launch into would also are dependent on what sort of regulations will develop in those different areas. So basically, we plan for local procurement. But depending on the stages of the development of the market, we still have to continue working with different types of partners to be sustainable in procurement. But as Toyota-san mentioned earlier, as for materials, Toyota Tsusho has had long history of it securing our natural resources, and we are safe until 2030. So, we will have both partners' help and in-house production. The basic materials will be secured. In 2030, 200 gigawatts hour or plus was your original plan. It also has to be increased because of 3.5 million vehicles. How much would that increase be? Based on that criteria, 280 gigawatt hour is something that we are looking at. Thank you very much. Next person, please. Yamamoto-san, journalist in the front row, please. I'm Shinya Yamamoto, a freelance journalist. Thank you. This time, there were a lot of specific announcements made, and I was quite surprised. But uh, what I am uh, want to know more is about uh, to President Toyota's true feeling. For hydrogen and hybrids, I think you have a lot of aspirations, and your true thoughts have been um, made public in many occasions. But for battery EVs, I think it's more like, yes, we're doing it, a kind of a business-like uh, reality announcement uh, kind of uh, presentation. So I want to strike the point and uh, ask you, for you, President Toyota, do you like battery EVs or not? Well, maybe if it's difficult to respond uh, as president of the company, you can respond as Morizo. Great question. <laughs> Well, if I had to make an answer, well, the battery EVs that Toyota was developing uh, in the past, I was not interested in. But the EVs uh, that we are now developing uh, for the future, I am interested in. And the reason why I say that is because the first uh, EV that I've driven, it was a RAV4 EV. That's the first Toyota EV I've driven. But at that time, of, for my driving skills was not so good either, was in those times. So the uh, the, I, the impression that I had at that time, probably it's not worth even talking about it. But the level up that I've been seeing is uh, the electrified vehicle for the 86, and I've uh, had a uh, had test drive in this Megawave. I forgot how many years ago it was, but the comment that I gave after my test drive was that it's a electric vehicle. That's what I said. And when it's an electric vehicle, it becomes all more or less the same kind. It's, it can be all grouped as an electric vehicle, not different. Uh, so from each other. But uh, for us 
we have the Lexus brand and uh, we have the Toyota brand and we are a OEM pursuing what is the uh, distinctiveness of that brand. But then if it's EVs, it becomes more like a commodity. So that was the path. So, uh, so like you have said, uh, Yamamoto-san, uh, business-like, uh, I was, of course, supporting, but uh, uh, driver Morizo may have a different opinion. So that was how you've seen it and maybe you were right. But... Now I'm a master driver, and as a master driver, uh, the reason why I became a master driver and the training that I came when uh, I came through, I always use the FR vehicle for my driving, and also that was FR vehicle was the reason uh, for becoming a master driver. But recently, I'm now uh, in the rally races and also super Taiku races, and in these motorsports gemba from the FR vehicle, I've now changed it to a four-wheel drive vehicle. This is the car that I use uh, in my motorsports activities. And so my master driver sensibility probably has changed with this vehicle change, and that will be the power, the motor uh, efficiency. Uh, the uh, motor will have a higher efficiency of, of power than the gasoline uh, engine. So in a certain sense, uh, like if, if we have a four-wheel drive a platform with controls, it can become an FF car or an FR vehicle. So if we have that kind of control technology, then Morizo in any circuit, uh, any rally competition, Morizo will be able to drive fast and safe. That's what I think. And uh, in the past uh, national championships, uh, Norisan uh, won. He became champion, and at that circuit, uh, the rookie racing drivers, uh, there are many rookie racing drivers now, they're very active in motorsports. So we have the professional drivers, uh, and those driving skills of those professional drivers are reflected into the vehicles. So I think we are now uh, able to uh, reflect those skills and make a fun-to-drive car. So that is the higher expectation I have now. And like myself, a gentleman driver, whether it's drive or wet, or if it's a mountain road or snowy road or whatever or rough road and any kind of road uh, a fun to drive car that you can drive safely with this platform there's a possibility that we can develop that kind of a car that is a big change point of our company but just with control technology if we try to create the flavor it's like uh, you have an overcooked noodles and putting tempura on it and say that it's delicious but in the past several decades starting with our team TNGA initiatives uh, we have started the base, uh, the framework, and then the chassis, the body rigidity. We have really been focused on making ever better cars in all of these areas. A very steady improvement, steady Kaizen has been accumulated in the past decades. And uh, now we have the Shimoyama proving grounds open, and therefore we have are able to use these proving grounds and, and test the cars with tough conditions and train the car. So with this environment, we, I think, are now at a point where a more safe and a more fast driving and a more fun to drive vehicle can be developed as an uh, EV. So including BEVs, I have expectations for Toyota vehicles. So that's why it's not anymore just a business matter. And even for driver Morizo, um, for, uh, for my Morizo hat, I have uh, strong expectations and it will be very interesting. And uh, probably the uh, autonomous driving vehicle will be different if it is uh, this kind of a OEM creating it. So that is also included into our plan. So from your perspective, uh, maybe I hope you understand that uh, we are very much serious in BEVs, FCEVs, uh, hybrids, and also the gasoline conventional vehicles that smell like gasoline and have a big sound. We're still very much serious. So uh, as uh, Morizo hat and also as my president hat, that has not changed. But again, I want to repeat myself that for any of these fields that we work on, we're working with our friends and partners very seriously. And if it is something that our customers will be willing to choose, then, and if they can become into smiles, that is the kind of products we want to provide from Toyota. And so the developers, we want to uh, have a strong feelings for it and have our affection and uh, develop it. And then I, we hope that the customers will select it. Uh, whether it will be selected is an uncontrollable for us, so that is why we have a full lineup for our strategy. Thank you very much. Next question, please. 
I see a hand over there. Mihori san, is that you? Please. Thank you. I am Mihori, a freelance journalist. Next year in Japan, BZ4X will be launched. And at the time, the national dealership will have to have fast chargers. Do you have a plan of realizing that? Because I really feel it is necessary for your dealership to have the fast chargers. We do have a plan, yes, but it may take longer. 2025, the year 2025, would be the target where all the dealers in Japan will have fast chargers. For our customers, I believe that's an important part of the infrastructure. But on the other hand, in Japan, unfortunately, we're seeing the declining number of chargers installed. I don't know whether we are in the transition period, but, well, certainly, we have to make sure that our electric vehicles will be easily charged for our customers. So, once again, that's an another area that we are full in. Now, when it comes to charging equipment, this is an area where different parties must co collaborate and cooperate. OEMs for BVs and FCEVs, well, certainly some of the OEMs can establish some by themselves, but that should not be left to the usage of the customers of only that particular OEM. OEMs, the infrastructure should be commonly shared. And that is an area that Toyota would like to work harder to realize. I hope the media would also send messages of making electric vehicles more convenient for the consumers because there is only so much OEMs can do when it comes to infrastructure. Lexus, 100%. Uh, we talked about the US, Europe, and China. 2,900 in Europe, 1,700 in China, and 5,000 in Japan would be the plan for the chargers. Now, Non-Toyota owners should also have an easy access to the chargers that we provide. That's another important consideration, and I thank you for your question. Next person, please. Wall Street Journal, please. Wall Street Journal, uh, Sean McLean. Apologies for the uh, question in English. Uh, the question is for Mr. Toyota or anybody else. I was wondering if you could uh, help me and the rest of my colleagues understand what exactly the message is you're trying to send today. On the one hand, you, you say you're going to sell as many EVs as you can, 3.5 million. But on the other hand, you want to make sure that we know that you're serious about zero emissions. So as the largest car maker in the world, why are you only targeting 35% of your current volume? Why not go for 100% or 50% as many of your competitors have done? Now, why is 3.5 million sufficient in your mind? はい、ま、その一方で、ゼロエミッションに関しての活動は真剣に取り組んでいると、世界最大の関係家である
Thank you. So we have said that we are going to be reducing the carbon uh, as much as possible with our carbon neutral vehicles. And the, with a baseline of 2030, uh, we want to increase the carbon neutral vehicles. So that is what our message. Uh, reality, in order to achieve carbon neutrality for each country's energy demand will have a big impact on this plan. That is a reality. That's a fact. And for that, Toyota, it's an uncontrollable for Toyota. So I hope that you will understand that point. So if Toyota says because there is no uh, energy uh, infrastructure and no uh, charging infrastructure, if we expand our uh, coverage to those areas too, then the customers who actually use our cars will have to think about what kind of situation they will end up in. I think it will be very inconvenient. Uh, we're for, we will force our customers to be having an inconvenient uh, environment to use their vehicle. So we want to avoid that inconvenience for our customers. So what are we want to our uh, pe the people here to understand today is that currently the market, when we look uh, at the global market, it is a diversified market that we are dealing with. That is a Toyota. Toyota is operating in a diversified global market. And for a diversified market, it's necessary to prepare a diversified solution. So I hope this point uh, you will understand. And also, if we provide the best solution for the average person, that will be not the best solution for everyone. Therefore, currently in a time where we have no, see no correct answer and when everything is uh, not clear, we want to uh, take the approach of having a diversified uh, approach. And for this diversified uh, approach and diversified solution, we will work uh, with full effort on every menu on this list. And also there are the suppliers that uh, are fighting together and also the affiliated companies uh, and partners that are uh, working with this together, and we are going to all going to be working on this seriously, uh, this approach attempt seriously. So I hope you understand that. And if I may add some comments regarding carbon neutrality, at the end, it's about energy security, very closely tied with energy security issue. The energy situation of each region and also the way that cars are used for, uh, by the customers and their needs must all be taken in consideration to strike the best balance. And for example, energy. It have to produce it, also transport it, and use it. So we have to think from a life cycle perspective for energy. And for the car usage environment, this will be greatly different according to the region we talk about, US, Europe. In the usage of cars uh, area, they will be run more for long distances. But in Japan, on the other hand, compared with US and uh, Europe, the average driving range will not be that long. So thinking of this situation, the use part, the life cycle impact of the usage of car part will be different according to the region and also the infrastructure establishment speed will be different. So we'll have to look at the, uh, this in totally in perspective and try to find the best mix. So that is what we're trying to do, find the best mix. And so we've been talking about the baseline, the criteria or guidelines. Uh, so the, if there is a sign that this situation is going to be changing more, then we have been building up our capability to deal with the changes in an agile way and flexibly. So uh, that is the preparation we'll be doing, and this is the kind of passion that we have and intent that we have to create the future. I hope you feel that uh, with today's presentation. Well, maybe looking at this from the other side, the battery EVs, uh, when we think of which market is more, most advanced uh, with the battery EVs introduction, I think it's a good perspective to have. And uh, as for example, it's Norway that you will, will know. And in the passenger car market, uh, 60 to 70% is already battery EVs in Norway. And the background of why it has uh, popularized so much is one is taxation privilege uh, and also the uh, free uh, parking uh, and uh, free uh, uh, tolling. And uh, these kinds of situation infrastructure has been set up uh, there in the Norway market. And as the president uh, said, uh, probably for the users, that was the convenience uh, for the customers. 
So the convenience was prepared for them. And at the end, taxations and rules, at the end, just with us, uh, it is uncontrollable. But in, we look, when we look at the reality and we look at the markets where the customers uh, are selecting the battery EVs, we'll have to have a cool mind to understand uh, what is the situation that uh, they are in in selecting the battery EVs. So going forward, uh, we now have shown today our intent, strong intent, to be working on this uh, direction. And uh, for the customers, uh, we need to look at the customer situation, their energy situation, like Mr. Toyota said, and uh, what kind of balance is needed in order to select uh, the battery EV. So we have to uh, discern what the necessary uh, balance is as we move forward. Therefore, with, for the changes that we are now uh, facing, uh, we'll have, we need to deal flexibly in an agile way. So it's very important for us now to prepare by shortening the lead time to do that as much as possible. Thank you very much. The next question, please. Asahi Daily. Thank you. I am Kondo from Asahi Shimbun. Mr. Toyoda, the carbon neutral is related to employment, as you have said. 3.5 million is a new criteria that you have for 2030. The suppliers which are being influenced certainly is watching your announcements very closely. There are things Toyota can do, and there are others Toyota cannot do, but I would like you to revisit your thoughts about employment. Thank you. Whether carbon neutrality will be accepted. Certainly, we have to make sure that customers would accept the idea. Now, as for carbon neutrality, the numbers that we have heard so far would be for 2050 and 2040. The only target numbers that we have heard so far. Just, we, we just did not want the targets to remain a target. We wanted to make sure that targets would be more achievable. For example, the cars that you are looking at right now, many of them will be launched into the market very soon and running up to 2030. In eight, next eight years, whatever we do, will be based on how we can imagine the future with our products. We have to continue having very good discussion with the stakeholders, and I'm sure today's event will be a springboard of accelerating such discussions. We have been making quarterly announcements for a business, and as for carbon neutrality, the criteria for different products are clearly announced so that the impact can be felt by the suppliers as well as the different production sites. So, as the president of JAMA, I often said, if BV 100% in Japan, then one million people would lose job in this automotive industry out of five million. At that time, different companies have come out with some vague target numbers, not any specific figures and roadmaps to achieve them. That's why I said that would lead to unemployment. But now, recently, we have seen more concrete plans from different OEMs. And now, as Toyota, we are also coming up with our very concrete plans, including the models to be launched. I am sure we'll have a renewed discussion, therefore, about carbon neutrality. At any rate, just because the trend is toward BEVs, we will not just follow suit, because, as you know, the automotive industry comprises of 
of the comp components procured from suppliers, and there is a spread of tier one, tier two, tier three suppliers supporting the industry. We've been focusing on and emphasizing the importance of leaving options at our suppliers. Some may manufacture components only for the ICE engines, and certainly carbon neutrality can become, or BEVs can become a major challenge. You cannot just say you're going toward the direction of BEVs just because that's a trend of the market, whatever the size and scale of the company and the business models, we have to remember that there are companies and people who work there who have been making those components. And we do not want the automotive industry in the future to leave some of them behind. What they have done so far was meaningful. But still, if the market decides to go differently, then you have to come up with some ideas of how for those companies and people to continue their business. And we want to have a realistic discussion about that. Like I said in my presentation, the future will not be determined by the numbers cited by the leaders, but by the action based on passion and aspirations. Even if we have this carbon neutrality target, for the future, our action and conduct for the next five years will certainly change our future in 2050, and we would like to see that happen. We have done that in the past, we have done that until now, and I'm sure whatever we have done have been meaningful. And that applies to our suppliers as well. And we want to make sure that our suppliers feel the same way. That's the reason why we would like you to understand the future will not be changed overnight. The future will be the accumulation of today and the past. We've been talking about leaving many options, as many options as possible, and I'd like you to embrace the idea of the importance of that. Well, 100%. Not being 100% does not mean we have aspirations. We, this is the best we can come up with in terms of the number of vehicles that we'd like to build. I really hope you will let us and let this entire industry keep on working. Thank you very much. Next person, please. From the Daily Automotive paper, Nikan Jidosha, please, on the second row. I'm Fukui from Nikon uh, Daily Automotive News. And for the EVs that you've talked about, I'd like to ask about the cost. So comparing with the same uh, size uh, gasoline vehicle, how close will the selling price be or when is the timing that it will be uh, lower than the current vehicles? I think EVs, the cost will be a big bottleneck. So what is the cost plans for Toyota? In the past, you said the battery uh, cost for EVs, it's going to be halved by 2030. But uh, for the total vehicle cost, how are you going to be reducing the uh, cost? Uh, President Toyota has always been saying that Toyota is going to provide affordable vehicles. So how are you going to make it more closer to the gasoline vehicles, the ICE vehicles? What is the plan? Thank you for your question. Cost reduction is really something that we have to steadily work on step by step. That's the only way that we can achieve cost reduction. That's the reality. And for example, as I explained in the battery IR event, the power efficiency 
power consumption efficiency, making it more efficient, then we can reduce the uh, usage of the power and that will reduce the battery cost. So in order to improve the battery, this is also something that we have to steadily, step by step, make improvements. For example, the approach that we have acquired through our hybrid uh, experience is that uh, the car that is in driving, uh, maybe the brake uh, is being dragged and that dragging feeling, uh, the dragged brake and uh, also considering how to make a strike a balance with the feeling of the driver, uh, we have to make the adjustments. And little by little, we have made the improvement, and that is the kind of experience that we have built up. And Toyota is that kind of a company. From the past, uh, we have uh, learned from our uh, predecessors uh, this approach of making improvements. And going forward for the R&D efforts, we will be working little by little steadily. That's the same approach we'll do. So that's also exactly what uh, Mr. Toyota says, uh, that we are going to be seriously working uh, steadily. There is no way that uh, we have one uh, solution to fix, uh, uh, make a big improvement. There's, and we have to do steadily. So it might be we use the same perspective, come up with different ideas, and build it up one by one. An accumulation of these efforts will be uh, ending up in the reduction of prices maybe five, ten years in the future. Uh, but honestly speaking, when it, chain, it becomes lower than the gasoline uh, engine vehicles, it's not easy to achieve that kind of a price level. But we are not going to give up. And for whatever kind of gasoline vehicle it was, what kind of electrified vehicle it was, what kind of battery electrified vehicle it is, the non not changing uh, OEM's uh, responsibility is to provide a reasonable uh, and affordable uh, vehicle uh, that is good in quality. So that will not change and that will be our approach. Thank you very much. Next question will be the last one. From Newspix. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm Akira Rashi from Newspeaks. Recently, some environmental organizations have ranked Toyota at the very low end of the climate action ranking. They believe you are not fully into EVs. Well, at least that is my understanding. Now, once again, for Toyota, what is the positioning of EVs? And in addition, up until now, you have been working full-fledgedly on ICEs, and what will happen to ICEs and their develop further development? Thank you very much. Each three of us should respond to the question because I'm looking for it to listen to their responses myself. Thank you. Now, in terms of ICE development, hydrogen engine has now become a reality. Now, you burn something and get energy. As an industrial manufactured goods, this is a technology which can be dubbed as artistic because this has enabled many consumers comfortable and high quality of life and it's a very important tool which achieved that. As Akio-san often says, what is evil is carbon. When you burn something, if you don't get any carbon emissions, then you can still have a major utility of what burning does. So, ICE without carbon emissions, if that is possible, it shouldn't be applied to all the scenes, to all the customers. But for some customers, they may enjoy utility of that mechanism. Now, in Brazil market, carbon neutral 
I responded from the perspective of ICEs. Now, Sato-san would address EV part of your question because he has made an announcement the Lexus will be EV, 100% EVs. Thank you. Now, not only BEVs, but we are selling cars with wonderful experience to our consumers. So being a vehicle, being a car is important. ICEs and hybrid alike, cars should be exciting. As Mr. Toyota often says, the smell of gasoline, the sound of ICE engines, there are some excitement from ICEs. BEVs, on the other hand, may have a different form of excitement. BEVs use electricity and motors with wonderful responsiveness, with smooth acceleration and deceleration, and quietness, something lacking in ICEs, some new value add is there, especially for a luxury segment Customers are looking for acceleration, something not achievable by ICEs. Motors can offer such excitement. I think the time has come. What I mean by that is under Master Driver Toyota, we have been trained. We have been going through exercises like those of high school students, and we have been refining Lexus and uh, continuing such exercises. And as you have seen in the video, it took 10 years for us to develop, come up with a BEV, which can make Akio Toyoda smile a little finally. So exploring new opportunities are still abound in BEVs especially when it comes to performance. As Mr. Toyoda mentioned, controllability of the performance really leaves you with interesting maneuverabilities, and electrification technologies are very effective in doing so. So we may be able to build cars, which is more exciting, and that's the reason why we are shifting to BEVs at Lexus. So this is my response to your question of positioning of EVs. It's an opportunity which can offer us exciting future. Simon? Yeah, I'll keep it really short, but basically, from a design perspective, from a product perspective, an EV or the EV uh, you know, era is really an opportunity for new experiences for the customer. And to be able to do something that's uh, proactively fun, exciting, and at the same time, you know, has some value toward the future carbon neutrality. And this is an incredibly exciting time, that's all I think, you know? So what I want to say more than anything is, is sometimes it's easy to look at the rational side first, but actually, uh, the chance or the opportunities are going to come on the, the emotional side as well. And maybe, you know, we've heard for the last 10 years or so that people have lost interest in cars and vehicles. I think it's exactly the opposite now. I think there's an incredible potential to open up, not only with the electric powertrain, but also connection, you know, through digital data and create incredible new experiences for people. That's my take on it. Temishka ni okotai itashimasu. 
、えー、私の観点としては、やはりデザインおよびプロダクトということになるのですけれども、EV の時代というのは、まさにお客様に新たなエクスペリエンスを提供することができるオプチュニティを包含している時代だというふうに考えます。ワクワクドキドキとする経験、これこそが将来に向けてカーボンニュートラルさえも実現できるのではないかという新たな付加価値を持って到来しているわけですので、まさにワクワクする時代となったものだと考えます。いろいろなことを考える際に、まずは合理性を考えるというのは、考え方として楽なのかもしれませんが、しかし、実はエモーショルな、エモーショナルな観点を考えることによってこそ、新たなチャンスが生まれる場合もございます。過去10年間ほど、自動車への関心が薄くなってきた自動車離れが起こっていると言われた時代が続いておりましたけれども、しかし、今は全く逆になりました。電動化されたパワートレインばかりではなく、例えばデジタルデータなども、そこでは活用することができるのではないか、新たな電動化の道筋の中から、今まで考えもしなかった新たなチャンスが生まれてくるのではないかということを考えますと、まさにそうしたこれまでにない体験を提供することができるのが EV なのではないかと考える次第です。In addition to that, you mentioned the environmental organization ranked Toyota at the lowest in climate action. Well, it is their take, but are we really backward looking in terms of EVs? We are talking about 3.5 million EVs now with 30 models. Will we still? be judged as backward looking in terms of electric vehicles? What should we do then? Well, I would very much like to hear the answers what we should do if that's the case. Do we look at numbers by percentage or the absolute numbers? Vehicles are for individual customers. One vehicle per one customer. So it's not the percentage business, it's the number of absolute numbers that we are talking about, serving that number of customers, the total number of vehicles. However large that may be, may be, we will be building each and every vehicle with great effort putting into it. Whatever the powertrain, whatever the vehicle type would be, Toyota and Lexus vehicles should continue to offer the value of fun to drive, and that's what we are determined to continue to do. Thank you very much for being with us today toward the end of the year. So many people showed their interest, and I'm extremely grateful. As for carbon neutrality, we will be active and proactive in working toward and in this world of uncertainty. We still remain. Confident in offering many pos possible options. And each of those options, we are putting our full effort. And that's something that we wanted everyone here to understand. Thank you very much once again for being with us. Thank you very much. Now it is time to close this event. Once again, thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you very much.